All right, so I'd like to talk about this question here where I've got the torque on an object that is um, moving through a viscous medium. And in that viscous medium, it decides to change its direction by 90 degrees, all right? So if you look at this, this thing is going to, at some point over here, uh, change its direction. And it's going to have a limiting um, position uh, it's going to have a limiting position of zero. So it's in the, on the positive side, right? V0 over alpha is positive. And then this is getting smaller and smaller. It's going to have a limit uh, on this y-axis. So it's going to do something like this. So it's never going to get there while it's turning. And then eventually it's just going to keep on going up forever. Um, that's what this part says, right? So that is more or less what we're trying to describe is something going on this um, line. So that's what this position function for this object describes is uh, over here prior to the turn, it has a force this way, it gets to its terminal velocity, then uh, that's t equals zero. And then after the turn, it's got a force going this way, equal force going that way. And it turns and goes up there. So I want to find out what the torque is when I do something like this. So there's a torque causing this um, change in direction as well, right? If we're ch changing the angular momentum, we're changing the direction, um, we're causing a torque. So we're going to have to um, figure out what that torque is. We don't have to, but I'd like to find that out, and that's what I'm about to do. All right, and so if I'm given uh, the position function, which is this vector function here, as a function of time, we get the position, RT. What I want to do is I want to find the torque on this thing. And that could be a function of time. I don't know yet because, you know, I haven't, I haven't done the problem. Or maybe actually I have done the problem. I do know. But you don't know yet because you haven't watched me do the problem yet. All right, so one, let's find that velocity. All right, so if you find the velocity, um, what do you need to do? You need to take that first time derivative. All right, that's the reason why this is in this chapter, right? Um, you know, the book does a lot with the torque here and there. And I think even though this is a physics two subject, um, we should go through the torque again. That's partially why I have this particular example, right? Is just to um, remind you about how the torque and the angular momentum are related and how they're derivatives and, you know, cross products and all those other fun things that you might not remember because it's been a long time. Okay, so I've got, I've got this as my um, as my operation. Now I distribute these t's, right? I don't know why I've got a funny bracket and a curly bracket and a regular one, I'm not sure. All right, so I distribute the operator, right? And that'll get me what I need to know, right? Uh, ddt v naught t minus v naught over alpha one minus e to the minus alpha t, and then there's a zero way out there. I can never get this exactly right. All right, so then um, I go ahead and I just take these derivatives. So I have a minus. Um, 1 over alpha e to the minus alpha t is the derivative of the e to the alpha t, right? So that means the velocity is minus v naught um, e to the minus alpha t, all right? So that's exactly what we want. So it's at v naught here, and then it just dies down, right? And then when I take this derivative, I get... Um, for the first term, dt dt is 1, so the first term is v naught, And then for the second term, d1 dt is 0, but the minus e um, plus alpha t is a um, is plus 
1 over alpha e to the minus alpha t. So this is a plus, then we have a minus here, so it stays minus. And so we end up with a v naught e to the minus alpha t and 0. So this one starts off at 0, right? Why the y component is 0 when, it, when we begin, but it moves up to this same terminal velocity way up here. Exactly what we wanted. Good, 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 right? So now we want to find the angular momentum. So if we have the velocity now, we can find the angular momentum because we also have the position and we have the mass, right? So L, the angular momentum, is equal to something interesting like R cross P, the momentum, which is equal to M R cross R dot, the velocity. Um, which is equal to, um, yeah, let's go ahead and do this matrix thing. So I don't think I've done this matrix thing enough for you. Um, let's start at the bottom with um, R dot, that's minus V naught, E to the minus A alpha T. And then for R it was V naught over alpha E to the minus alpha T. And this is, um, I haven't been using them, so x hat, well, I'll go with x hat because I like the x hat. All right, and then v down here is v naught 1 minus e to the minus alpha t. All right, up here we have v naught t minus v naught over alpha 1 minus e to the minus alpha t. And that's the y hat. And then z hat, um, we have 0 and 0. And if you're prescient enough, you can figure out, because these two are zero, that means the x and the y components um, are both zero. And it's only the z component of the angular momentum that's going to be interesting. So we have the z component. And for that, we have v naught over alpha times v naught um, 1 minus e to the minus alpha t. So we have v naught squared over alpha, right, times e to the minus alpha t 1 minus e to the minus alpha t. And we have um, this one, right, which is, uh, oops, that's part one. And then we subtract this thing, which is um, plus v naught squared e to the minus alpha t times t minus um, v naught squared over alpha e to the minus alpha t, 1 minus e to the minus alpha t. Oh, and isn't that interesting? These two guys cancel, so that angular momentum just ends up being um, v naught squared, and somewhere along the lines I lost my mass. Okay, so I lost my mass, but I, I regained my mass. So m v naught squared um, e to the minus alpha t um, times t. All right. So I think actually t times e to the minus alpha t is usually how it's written, right? Yeah. I think I remember that more. So let's see what happens when I um, find the torque, right? And then we find the torque. No, I forgot Z. You find the torque by taking the derivative, right? So tau is, I think, what they use in the book, is equal to L dot, which is equal to um, DDT times all this stuff, M V naught squared T e to the minus alpha T. Um, so we have. Um, two terms here, so we have the first one, m v naught squared e to the minus alpha t. And then we have the other one where we um, have minus alpha, right? So we have minus m v naught squared um, times alpha uh, times t times e to the minus alpha t. So I can combine all that. Oh, that's all in the z direction. I'm being bad. Okay, v, v naught squared. 
um, e to the minus alpha t times 1 minus alpha t in the z hat direction. So that's my torque. So just keep on going and you'll eventually get there. Um, I guess you should also remember that torque can be r cross f, depends on what they give you in the problem, right? But um, and I guess from this, I could go through and try to figure out what the uh, force was. I think I'd have to do something tricky up here and um, so forth and so on. But I don't really feel like doing that, and you don't feel like doing that. So we'll just um, make a tacit agreement to ignore that for now. All right? So I'll talk to you soon, and uh, you have a really great time. All right? Bye now.